our next course in the first semester is data analysis and visualization. In this course, first we'll start with basic plotting methods. We will recap some of the concepts that you probably learnt in your high school days, right? Basic plotting methods. But of course, we will graduate and learn more advanced techniques also in the context of data science, machine learning and AI. Again, for each plotting technique, we will understand the underlying mathematics. How is this plot generated? What is the mathematics behind it? How to interpret that plot? How to make sense out of it? How to come to conclusions using this plot? Similarly, we'll also try to implement some of these plotting techniques using code, using Python code itself. Again, when we implement something in code, we will try to apply two strategies. One, try to implement some of these plotting methods from scratch so that you understand how that plot itself works internally. Right? Similarly, we will use very popular libraries like matplotlib, seaborn, plotly, all the popular Python libraries to make plotting simple. Again, the advantage in implementing some of these plotting techniques from scratch is that it will help you have a deeper understanding of the underlying mathematics and how the plot is generated in the first place. So by implementing some of them from scratch, you will learn how these libraries like matplotlib implement some of these plotting techniques internally. That's very, very important. That will give you the depth of understanding. And of course, for each of these plotting methods, we will pose them in the context of real world problems. We will take real world problems while solving it, we will try to introduce each of the plotting methods and equally importantly, we will discuss which plotting technique to use for which, for which real world problem, in which context. So we'll take a problem and say, hey, for this is plotting method one, two, three, which of them is more apt and why? Right? Because that's very, very important when you're solving real world problems, when you're actually analyzing real data, being able to understand and think through which plot is important for which real world problem. Right? So we will cover all of that as part of this course. Now the next topic is probability and statistics. So as part of probability itself, there are a lot of plots in probability like PMF, PDF, CDF, etc. Histograms. So those are all very, very important concepts. So probability also plays a very important role in plotting. Similarly, even for data analysis, there are lots of tools and techniques in probability and statistics that we will learn from scratch whether it's parametric statistics or non-parametric statistics. We will learn everything from what is a distribution, what is a histogram, to state of the art, very, very, very interesting uh, hypothesis tests, even for non-parametric hypothesis testing. Now for each of these techniques, as usual, we will learn the underlying mathematics. We will focus on code. Again, whenever we do coding, we will do it using two methods. One, implement it from scratch so that we understand the underlying mathematics very well. We'll also use popular libraries. For some of probability and statistics, we will use some functionality inbuilt in SciPy, right? So we will use all of this. And obviously, all of these concepts will be introduced in the concept, in, in the context of real world examples. Those things, so for everything, we will go full in depth on math. For code, we will cover both from scratch and using libraries. And everything will be in the context of real world examples and real world problem solving. Cool. So as I just mentioned, for probability and statistics, we will cover both parametric methods and also non-parametric methods because sometimes you can't use parametric techniques everywhere. Again, please understand that we may not be able to cover everything in probability in this single course, right? There will be some concepts in probability and statistics like Bayesian machine learning or Bayesian statistics that we will cover in the context of Bayesian models in future courses, right? So we will cover everything in context. So this probability and statistics that we cover in this course is in the context of data analysis and visualization only. Okay. So the next very interesting topic is when you have high dimensional data, when you have data in 100 dimensions, how do you visualize it? Obviously, one way is to do dimensionality reduction. So for each dimensionality reduction technique that we study, we will learn the underlying mathematics. We will try to pose it as a mathematical or numerical optimization problem, understand how to solve that problem using calculus and using gradient descent methods. For code, as usual, we'll follow both methods. We will use popular libraries like scikit-learn, but we'll also see how to implement, if not all, at least some of the dimensional reduction techniques from scratch. So, so that you understand how, let's assume take principal component analysis. You, you should be able to understand how principal component analysis is implemented within scikit-learn, right? So, so we will have some of those coding exercises and coding code walkthroughs where we will discuss how how some how a specific technique like PCA 
could be implemented from scratch just using basic Python libraries. But also, we will also study it in very popular libraries like scikit-learn. Again, as usual, everything will be in the context of real world examples. Then we'll end this whole course itself by visualizing high dimensional data using cutting edge methods, using state of the art techniques. How do you visualize something in very high dimensions? Again, for each of these, we will go full depth on math. We will also introduce you to some open source libraries specifically designed for visualizing high dimensional data. These are actually libraries, research libraries written by researchers, some of whom actually designed these high dimensional data visualization techniques. So we will also touch upon some of that open source code. And we will see it in the context of some very interesting, really high dimensional data sets in biology and in, and in e-commerce, etc.